Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I want to show you an automatic fungus farm that I signed in Snapshot 20W12A. First I want to show the game mechanics before I show off the farm. So since the latest snapshot, we can get fungus and other nether plants by bone milling nylium. So there's two types of nylium, the crimson and the warped nylium. In case you bone meal the warped nylium, it gets mostly warped nether plants, but there's also a chance to get some crimson plants and crimson fungus. Okay, so in case of the warped nylium, you can get the nether sprouts, the nether roots here, and of course the warped fungus, and even some twisting vines, but that's really rare to happen. So you just need to click on the block directly, or you could also have a dispenser with some bone millet that aims at the block directly. So you could have it next to it or under it. If you bone meal the nylium, there's also a chance that fungi and plants could generate on neighboring blocks in a 5x5 five five area. But those blocks have to be blocks that would support placing of the plants. For example, we can place the crimson roots on dirt or grass, but we couldn't do that on concrete. So if you have some grass or dirt around your nylium, you could also generate the fungi and the plants on top of that. So as you can see here, there's also chance it actually gets some warped fungus if you bone meal the crimson. Okay, this also works vice versa, but mostly you would actually get warped plants, of course. Okay, this mechanic that it works with the neighboring blocks is actually a bit different, so I'm not sure if this is uh, intended. If you remember, for example, flower farms where you bone meal a grass block, it's a chance that you would generate flower or tall grass on top of the grass, but this would only work with neighboring grass blocks. So you could place flowers on the coarse dirt or normal dirt here, but they wouldn't generate when bone milling the, the neighboring grass block. So this might be considered a bug, not sure if it will change. All right, now let's check out the automatic farm. Here I actually added a switch, so you can switch between crimson and warp mode. So there's a triple piston extender that would push in the crimson nylium from this side and another one pushes in the warped nylium from the other side. All right, so here's the on off switch. We basically have the bone mill dispenser here at the bottom and there's two nylium blocks at top that get shifted back and forth. So we would generate the plants, then move the blocks over so they pop off in item form and the arriving position do the same, bottom will the other nylium block and push it back. So every four ticks we would spend one bone meal and actually get quite a lot of items. Okay, after a while we also clear those items. There's some waterlock trapdoors that we open. Meanwhile, we also stop the bone milling because while water is on top, no new plants could generate. There's also an intelligent off switch. So if you turn it off, then it would also flood the area again and all the items are flushed over and put it into your storage system, of course. All right, so let's check out what we are actually getting in terms of items. It's more efficient with the warped nylium. There we get about 190,000 items per hour, so over 10 items per bone meal. All right, so we get the following items with the warped nylium. We get 75,000 nether sprouts, 15,000 warped fungus, 100,000 warped roots, so those here, and also there's this really small chance that, it, that you get some twisting vines, so you only get 20. So compared to the other numbers, those are really almost negligible, you could almost call it an easter egg. I also tried this out to see if we can get this manually, I was bone milling some nylium over and over again, but it's so rare, I, I, I've actually never saw, seen that before. So I was actually surprised that we get those items because I've never seen it uh, since yeah, the items are broken almost immediately there. Okay, additionally we also get some crimson items, so 1100 crimson fungus and 1100 crimson roots. Okay, so in case we push in the crimson nylium, we're getting about 100,000 crimson roots, 13,000 crimson fungus and 1100 warped fungus. Of course, the fungus is probably the most interesting item to get from this farm because it would be required to make um, planks and logs, etc. So for a tree farm, this farm would actually be required to maybe run in the background to replenish fungi in order to run the farm. Um, 
It's a bit unfortunate that we can't compost the roots and the other nether plants. So I can't click them in inside of the composter. I checked there's already a bug report, but I'm not sure if it's intended that we can compost um, all of the other items. Would be quite helpful since yeah, you probably just need this farm for the fungus. What are you gonna do with 100,000 roots that you probably don't need for, for decoration? So there's no other use for it at the moment, apart from yeah, decoration. Would be nice if you would at least be able to compost it. I decided to not make a block by block tutorial for now and just provide a world download because I'm not entirely sure if the mechanics as they are right now will stay this way. So I'm not sure if this is intended here with the dirt blocks. Um, in case yeah, this would change and we need tenilium for all the blocks, then it would also get more complicated um, to switch out the blocks here. So that's one thing I'm uncertain of and it would also be nice if we could at some point compost the other plants and then I could have hooked this up to the system as well. So I will either make a tutorial once 1.16 is out and nothing changed about the farm or also update a version in case something changes about it. But that's it for today. Thanks so much for watching. See you in the next video. Bye bye.